Right, Righto, welcome to episode 6. In this episode, we have the wiring loom and a few other jobs in the engine bay. Righto, wiring loom time now. At the moment, the springs are down at Brown Springs getting reset. So what we need to do is we'll throw a trolley down the rear, we'll wheel it out in the open, then myself and Jake can jump on and look at doing the wiring loom. Uh, if we get off the hoist, we've got to open the doors right up. It's mainly in the engine bay and mainly inside the dash. What needs to be done underneath, we'll have a look at when we get it back up here. Right, it's wiring time. Now with me is the Rod Shop wiring guru, Jake. Jake, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Real good. All right, what do we got? So basically here, we've got a VZ 6-litre auto wiring harness. So basically what I've done here, I've stripped all the wiring out of it I no longer need. I've made it a standalone setup. So basically, all the relays, fuse boxes, all of there, that's all going under the dash with the ECU. I've reprogrammed the computer to suit a standalone setup, removed everything that I no longer need. That's going to throw any error codes up. So basically, it's just got a stand startup tune in it. Um, that's basically it. So, step one, what we're going to do with the car over this side. Everything stays the same on this side. We drove the car in, so headlights, wiper, um, washer bottle horn, everything worked in this car. So, with this setup, of course, we've fit the LS engine. Um, we've had to relocate the wiper motor up underneath the dash. So, basically, we're just going to pull the wiring back underneath the car, hook it into the new um, position for the wiper motor and then we'll make it start on the opposite side. So on the passenger side, to start with removing the old battery cables. They're no longer gonna support the LS engine, unfortunately. We've got the external regulator. We no longer need an external regulator for the LS engine. So that all will need to be removed. And then we've got our original engine harness plug here. So that will all be disconnected. All the wiring from this plug will be pulled inside the car because we are mounting all the fuse box relays and ECU up underneath the dash for easy installation. All right, so that's a good start. Jake is about to make a start. Now, quick one, obviously that plug, we did pop a couple of terminals, yours may not come out that easy, but so we've got it set up on this side, so it's fairly clear. So, Jake, what's your plan? We're gonna mount the fuse box, computer, and whereabouts are we going through the firewall? So basically, ECU, up underneath the dash, anywhere, the best location I've mounted them in the past has always been the kick panel, fuse box, relays just up underneath the, underneath the glove box, easy access, out of the way of everyone's feet. And through the firewall, we're actually are gonna go right next to where the heater hoses are, through the removable panel, so that way we're not drilling any extra holes through the firewall. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll let Jake make a start. Now, what he did mention there is we are going in a removable panel there, so we're not affecting the body. So. If you are going to go somewhere else and you are going to hide the wiring, check with your engineer. But what we're doing here is a bolt-in, bolt-out panel and it will not affect the structure of the vehicle. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let Jake take over and let him run you guys through on how to wire up your wagon. Now that I've removed the panel, I'm going to shoot it on down to one of the boys down the back. They're going to drill a 60 mil hole in there so we can fit the factory wiring diagram. So good. Okay, now that I've removed the external regulator that is no longer needed with the LS engine, I've removed the battery cables, I'm gonna move onto the old engine plug. So with that wiring that was in there, that's got the main battery positive that fed the original fuse box underneath the car. So we're removing everything back in through the firewall. They've got the ignition wires that went to the original coil. We're going to do an ignition bypass. With these old cars, they used to run a points ignition. Unfortunately, that's not strong enough to power the ECU. So we're gonna to have to change that to the 12 volt system, which I'll show you later on in the video on how to do the bypassing system so that your car fires up and runs correctly. Now 
now that I've removed the original engine wiring plug and moved it up underneath the dash, I'm going to get get to it, start laying the LS harness back onto the engine, plug it all into the injectors, throttle body, down into where the alternator is, uh, starter motor, crank angle sensor, cam angle sensor at the rear of the engine, and then into the engine coolant tank. So basically, get the harness, everything's all labelled, lay it onto the engine, and then we'll take it from there. Alright guys, been an LS1 in the HKTG, it is very tight here at the back of the firewall. So, I've got Mark in here to give me a bit of a hand. We need to fight, feed this bit of the harness down underneath the original wiper motor mould in the firewall. It is a tight fit. Uh, so yeah, we'll start with feeding the transmission side underneath there. Uh, the crank angle sensor, which goes down the side of the block and then plugs into the crank angle sensor, along with the knock sensor and the starter motor solenoid wiring. Get to it, Mark. All right. So, pop the vacuum line off the back, give us a bit extra room. Now, we did mention earlier on, the trans dip is only just been sitting in there, so we've got to get the wiper motor set up before we can bolt that in. And we've mentioned in previous episodes that that was only dumped in there. So we'll just flick that out of the way, so I can get my little hands in there. So, Jake, feed us what we yeah, need. Yeah, we'll feed the, the transmission side of things first. Yeah, mate, so with the uh, 4L60, which we're running in this car, we need to pass the park neutral switch and the oxygen sensors down first. Like I said, it is a tight fit to get it underneath that wiper motor mold in the firewall. It helps being a little man in some sometimes. There's our transmission motor, Jago. Ah, perfect, mate. So now we'll pass the crank angle and the starter motor solenoid wiring down through there as well. I think pulling down. So we'll get that sitting gun in position later on. We'll put it back up on the hoist, lift it up in the air, drop the gearbox down just to give us a little bit extra room between the tunnel and the transmission lay the harness across the top of the transmission so that way we can plug it down into the park neutral switch, speed sensor and oxygen sensors. Right, so if you zoom the camera in over the top there you'll see we just tuck that down underneath the back lines, around the back of the engine lifting lug, and our wires will come out down the bottom there on top of the extractors. Right, right, perfect. What are you going to do, Jake? Put it in the air and do it, or you want to finish out uh, here? We'll just finish all out in the engine bay first and then uh, put the alternator in, wire all the alternator are back up again and then it just tidy up all the wiring at the front of the engine. All right, so quick question for Jake is, I know the answer, but the alternators on these things, any alternator work or is there a certain alternator we've got to go to? Basically, because we've gone for the LS, uh, LS2 with the smart alternator, you do need to run the smart alternator with these things. Um, but if you still want to run like the dummy light switch, like with the alternator warning light on the, on the dash, you can definitely just put an LS1 alternator on there, uh, which will all sit in the right location. Because we're going to be fitting aftermarket gauges to this car as well, oil and temperature, we do have little senders. So we've got the temperature sender adapter, we've got the oil pressure sender adapter. So these allow us to run the original factory LS senders in there for the ECU, as well as aftermarket gauges there on the dash. So for the temperature sender, we have a little hex key bung at the last extractor bolt here, which is just an 8mm socket which we'll remove that out and that'll be for the, where the temperature sender will adapt in. At the rear of the engine is where the oil pressure sender is. That is for the, for the ECU. We do have a T-piece there that we will allow us to run the original factory sender as well as one for the aftermarket oil pressure gauge. 
Now that we've removed the original hex key bolt, it's just a matter of putting a bit of thread sealant on the temp tender adapter and screwing it straight into the hole. I say sealant, as we do re rely on the earth from the engine block to work our sender. Alright guys, we finished the wiring out in the engine bay, we hooked the harness back up onto the engine, now it's time to feed the wiring through the firewall, so Craig can go and mount the fuse box, the computer all up underneath the dash, and we can finish wiring it into the HT on the driver's side. We're inside the car now. Now we've just brought the wiring in from the engine bay through to under the dash here. Now the fun part. Now we're gonna use, this is the original engine firewall mounting plug, where the 186 was originally plugged into. This here, we're gonna cut and disregard this plug because we are gonna need some wires added to here. So we've got our main thick battery positive, that originally powers up the original fuse box inside the car and all your headlight wiring and everything like that. Um, we've got a couple other wires here, starter motor solenoid, uh, ignition, this here wire here, this is the one we need to do an ignition bypass. Because this vehicle was originally points ignition, they did a resistor wire in there so you wouldn't burn the, the points out in the distributor. So that there drops it to 8 volts. We need 12, 12 and a half, 13 volts, uh, so the computer can see the correct voltage and look, it's just gonna make the car run a lot nicer. Learn no longer needed, we'll disregard that. And then we'll start with pinning out these wires. So, lucky we've got our instructions. This has basically got everything we need to know on how to wire our LS harness into the HT. Righto, so we've got Jake working on the wiring. Now while he's on the wiring, we've had a little parcel turn up and new radiator. So, uh, we see the name on the side there. Now when we purchased this, it's eBay, type in HKTG V8 radiator. With thermo fans, a five year warranty they offer. Now I'm just stating, I haven't used this company before. It was a quick eBay guess. It's only $300 delivered. So now if that turns up for $300 with a five year warranty and it fits, should be a good thing. Now, all we do with all our other cars is when we're setting them up, throw it in position. After it's mounted, to get the radiator hoses, which I'll run you through, we just get a bit of welding wire, we bend it out of the water port, into the port on the engine, go to your local Repco, Auto Pro, Bursons, any of them guys, take your wire template with you, measure the diameter on both ends, your radiator port, and away you go and you should be able to match up some hoses to suit. So we'll have a go at fitting it, see how we go. All right, so a super slight issue, if we slide right down in behind the radiator box in here, we can see it just touches the top of the rail there. So what I'm gonna do is gently just measure the width of the rails, measure the bottom of the radiator brackets, and we'll just slice off what we need and we'll try to drop it in again. So quick measurement, quick cut, and we'll put it back in.
Right, that's super close. So let's go to Texas, just hitting down the bottom. Cut more mill off. Hopefully, then we can try, put our upper bolts in, sit the bonnet on, make sure it closes. Then we'll finish drilling holes, mounting it up and mount the hoses. Right, so the boys are, uh, are just gonna start realigning the bonnet. They uh, got a head start. So when they removed, they texted a line around the original hinge. So you can use masking tape, texter, or if it's a real early build and you're painting your cake and scribe it in. The advantage about doing this is when you come to fitting the bonnet, find your texture mark tape or describe line, nip them back up, and this will be an easy way to uh, aligning the bonnet to the guards and so forth. So it's still a helpful hint there, guys. Right, so the bonnet fits and clears really well. But what we will do, an easy way for you guys to check at home. So we've just got a bit of moulding clay, kids Play-Doh, blue tack, any of that kind of stuff is a really good and easy way to check your clearances. So if you just grab yourself a little ball, roll that ball up, just tack it down at the bottom there and you've got a nice little point at the top. And while we're going there, we did think we had about 10 or so mil, I think from memory on the one of the earlier ones on the master, but we'll double check that. As we can see, we have gained a little flat spot, but not much. Now, if you bring the camera down there, like I haven't got a ruler or a tape measure on me, that's a mile of clearance there that's got. Then we go over there, we can also see a flat spot up on the plato there. So, Jace, my assistant, he will once again. So, at the moment, there we have 18 mil on the master cylinder, and we're pretty much the same on the uh, radiator cap. So, now I know the radiator's got good clearance. We can whip it back out. I can mark the bottom holes and mount it for good. Uh, then we'll look at setting up some radiator hoses. All right, guys. We have followed our instructions. We found the wires that we needed. We also added in a couple of little extra wires. So the extra wires that we've got in there is just your reverse light circuit, which you do need to find, as this was a column manual. We do need to get up there, get the reverse light wiring, wire it into our harness. So I've just gone in, ran the extra wires that we can join into the original step, into the original factory harness. Now, we're going with our ignition bypass wire, well, our ignition, original ignition coil wire. As this is a steel resisted wire, the best option to do is go directly from the back of the ignition switch. Cut out, disregard this wire. We do need a true 12 volt ignition source from the back of the ignition switch. So the easiest way to do that is pull, pull the dash out and then pull out the ignition switch. Go from directly from the back of the ignition switch, from ignition source, straight down into that connector. That way, it'll all go through our wiring harness with all our fuse box, the relay, into the ECU. And, and that way you're getting your 12 volt circuit uh, without that ignition wire. So I'll step out now, I'll get one of the boys to come in, pull out the dash, and then I'll show you how to do, pick up the original 12 volt feed from the back of the ignition switch. piece there, that's the old uh, choke cable, we won't need that. So what we're going to do is we'll cut it short, put the cable in, sit it back in the dash that looks fa factory, we'll just cut the old cable off the back of it, it's less stuff in mind the dash. So throw that aside and we'll reassemble that when we refit the dash. So what I've done here is for Jake, I pulled everything forward, we'll leave it plugged in so you can see what's happened. Ignition barrel plugs here, he'll be able to get into the back. So there's a few jobs or a lot of work he's got to do in behind here. So it's all set, ready for him to go and we'll leave it to the expert. 
Hi right, guys, we're back. Mark's been kind enough to get in here for me and remove our dash cluster so we can access the ignition switch. So basically upon removal, we've noticed that our ignition switch is fairly faulty, being such an old car. So we're gonna change it out with a new ignition switch. Um, so basically today, we're just gonna get in there. We're gonna disregard the ignition bypass wire. We're gonna solder our new wiring that we ran. Uh, so we can now get our 12 volts straight to our ECU. We've done our ignition bypass setup. So we've ran our new wire from our new EFI harness that we've installed straight up to our ignition switch. We've cut and disregarded our old resistor wire. Just gave it a snip back, taped it back in the harness so it's not gonna cause us any issues later on down the track. Now being a three speed manual on the column, we've removed the old reverse light switch wiring straight up to here so now I can splice our reverse light wiring in because this has got the four speed auto in it it's got the reverse light switch and park neutral switch set up on the transmission so we've brought our wire up out of our EFI harness following our instructions can't go wrong without our instructions so I've made that a, a, a blue wire now and I'm just going to splice into our light green wire which is the original reverse light switch operational wire out to the back of the car All right guys, we've plugged our fuse box, our relays into the engine harness. We plugged also that relay and fuse box sub harness into our car. So basically, I'm gonna pass it all over to Craig now. He's gonna make all our bracketry to mount all the computer and the fuse box up under the dash for us. Mark's got me to make a bracket to mount the computer in. Um, so we're going to mount it up underneath the dash there. I've welded a, made a bit of a quick hat section, welded some nuts to it. Um, a few holes here, I'm just going to plug weld it up under the dash there. I don't want to drill or screw into the bottom of the plenum because in the future if the drain tubes get blocked, uh, water can come down. I don't want a, a water leak onto the computer or into the floor, so we should be right to go. Alright, so I've mounted the ECU up under the dash there, it's all done. Um, I've got a gearbox module here, I thought oh, there's a nice little dry spot in, in the side here behind the kick panel. So I've popped the cover off, um, that's normally there, and got the ECU for the gearbox, just a couple of little straps, I'm just going to uh, mount it in behind here, and then I'll put the kick panel cover back on and you might never know it's there. Alright, so I've mounted the ECU and the gearbox module underneath the dash. Now I'm going to mount up all the relays and the fuse box under there as well. So I'm going to mount them up under there in a nice and dry area. But make sure it's in a spot where it's nice and accessible. So if you do pop a fuse or need to check something, you can still get to it really easily. Alright, 
the bonnet's on, radiator's is in, clearance is really good, the majority of the wiring's done. So don't forget to like and subscribe below and stay updated with Team Rod Shop. We'll have a lot more to come. A couple episodes a week. Thanks for watching.